We have a very special emergency podcast today we have to get into because the Chargers have officially hired Greg Roman to be their offensive coordinator, and that is initially a pretty disappointing and not who we would have gone with, but at the same time, to an extent, you have to trust the process of Jim Harbaugh. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into a very special emergency edition of the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogmeyer. And you guys can make sure you never miss special shows like today by following and subscribing to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listening wherever you get your podcast from. But on today's show, we have to be getting into Greg Roman and the initial disappointment of going with a more old school run first type of approach with the offensive coordinator position. Also get into why you understand it because of Jim Harbaugh's process and knowing that we had to get out of the way and kind of trust him and knowing he might bring in someone like Greg Roman and also the impact of Justin Herbert. But that is, I think, where the initial disappointment comes from, David, just because you have a rocket arm quarterback. You want someone like a Ben Johnson, like we've talked about, right? You want someone, you know, Tanner Angstrom, someone who is more innovative, someone who's going to have the passing concepts that are going to excite you and someone you feel like can get the most out of someone who has all of the physical talent in the world of Justin Herbert. So I think it's initially, I understand, you know, the disappointment from Charger fans. And I definitely feel that. Yeah. I mean, I think when we first thought uh, and got word of Greg Roman being, you know, a part of the Chargers coaching staff, I think your mind went to, oh, well, maybe he's an associate head coach and a run game coordinator. Uh, Maybe he's, you know, a senior offensive analyst, just anything but offensive coordinator. But as some of the moves started happening and started the former associates uh, of Greg Roman that started to get hired, it it all became more and more clear that he was going to be the offensive coordinator. And now it is official. And yeah, it is a little bit disappointing. I'm not going to lie. I would have preferred someone who was maybe a little bit more uh, well-versed in their passing concepts, more successful in that. Greg Roman, you know, he has a very established calling card, and that is running the football and running it at an extremely high level. I mean, top 10 rushing attacks pretty much every single time he's been an offensive coordinator. That is what he brings to the table. But when you have a guy like Justin Herbert that can really make any throw on the football field, that can really do anything you want him to do on the football field, you want somebody that's going to maximize that aspect to be able to get the most out of Justin Herbert and that passing attack. And you just don't feel like that's going to happen as much with uh, Greg Roman. Yeah, and that's why I totally understand the disappointment. I would have definitely gone into a, a different direction because this is also, you know, someone that got fired by Jim Harbaugh's brother only a year ago and that Ravens offense reached new peaks under Todd Munkin, right? They just got rid of him. Obviously, Jim and John don't necessarily have the exact same philosophies, but He's taken a lot of Ravens players. You expect that's kind of what it's going to look like a lot. But I understand the disappointment of going, you know, with someone who kind of failed his last year in 49ers land when that happened, got fired his two games into his second season in Buffalo, and also a guy, you know, that's a four-time retread, right? This isn't a a new up-and-coming type of guy. This is a guy that's been tried out, has gotten fired. But it does also the guy that took, you know, Jim Harbaugh to three straight NFC championship games and a Super Bowl. So it's not like they haven't had success. It's not like we haven't seen this exact same duo have success. So I think part of it is trusting the process with Jim Harbaugh and understanding with what Jim Harbaugh's vision is. So we're going to talk about that. But I do want to tell you guys first that this episode is brought to you by Price Picks, the most easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Because with Price Picks, all you have to do is to pick two to six players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. The more entries you hit on, the more you win. If you hit on six of them in the same entry, you can win up to 25 times your money. They also have great promotions going on every single week. Like right now, you can get Patrick Mahomes with to go for more than or less than half a passing yard. That seems pretty easy, and all you have to do is combine that with one more thing, and you're already winning. And you could also use Christian McCaffrey rushing for more than or less than 87 and a half rushing yards, or George Kittle going for more than or less than 49 and a half receiving yards. So to do that, go to pricepeaks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL for your first deposit match up to hundred dollars at pricepeaks.com. Promo code locked on NFL for that deposit match up to hundred dollars. Price picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. David, we talked about the initial disappointment. 
But I think there's still reason to be hopeful and reasons to be excited as well. And the other part of this is just we knew with Jim Harbaugh that you were going to get what you were going to get. He is going to build the team how he sees fit. And you just have to trust a guy who was excellent in his only time in the NFL, I think 44, 19 and one. He's built this before. And so even if you're like, hey, I don't know if it's the right fit, that to a certain extent, you kind of have to trust him. And I do feel a lot more easy about this just because it is Jim Harbaugh and I can at least let some of that doubt go to okay hey you just have to let him do what he wants to do yeah this isn't a first time head coach this isn't a coordinator that just got promoted to head coach this is a guy that has just come off of a national championship okay yeah. he just reached the the pinnacle of college football and he has done it as at an extremely high level in the NFL like you just said Dan so I mean with Jim Harbaugh I definitely give him all of my trust he has earned that uh, until uh, you know until proven otherwise and so yeah i may not like the move initially but i do believe in jim harbaugh i believe in what he brings to the table i know that part of his vision part of his offense is physicality it's running the football it's establishing that running game and really being able to run it whenever he needs to and be able to put teams and put games away and ultimately rack up wins the best teams in the nfl can run the ball and run the ball when the other team knows they're going to run the ball and still be able to impose their will. That is exactly what Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman are wanting to do here with the Chargers. Yeah, and that is part of the pros column of bringing in Greg Roman, right? Everyone wants the Chargers to have a better rushing attack, but this is a dude where he immediately walks in the door and you feel like they're going to have a much better rushing attack, right? Yeah. Because per RBSDM, I mean, the 49ers ranked fifth in rushing success from 2012 to 2014. The Bills were 15th with a really bad team in 2015 when he had a full season there. And with the Ravens from 2019 to 2022, ranked second in success rate and first in EPA. They were the only team that even had a positive EPA over that span while running the football because passing is almost always better. Right. And that's, I think, one of the things with Greg Roman. It's like, hey, we know this is a passing league. You want to be involved there. But this is a guy that will actually make your running game a hugely positive impact on your team. So I do think that comes with the pros. You get someone who has an expertise in, in finding an offensive line, right? And building an offensive line to protect, building an offensive line that can dominate up front, and building an offensive line that can protect the quarterback. Because that's the other thing, David, is just what the impact is on Justin Herbert. And even though, you know, would I have rather had a more passing oriented guy? Sure. But I don't think it's all doom and gloom around Justin Herbert. Like, I think this is still fitting in that vision of what Jim Harbaugh wants, where, hey, they're going to try to make Justin Herbert better as a quarterback, but they're also trying to make the team around him better and hope that can help him too. Yeah, I mean, I think you're going to see a little bit dirt, different version of Justin Herbert, and that's not a bad thing. I think you're going to see Justin Herbert's passing yards probably go down. But I think you're I think you'll see his efficiency numbers increase. I think the completion pen percentage will get better because he, his play action game is going to improve because he's going to have an actual running game yeah. that he can rely on. And passing also, attacks and fancy schemes are great, David. But if the yeah. quarterback's getting hit after half a second, then it doesn't mean anything. Right. So exactly. I think that's a great point. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So be, being able to run the ball, being able to, you know, really uh, also run the ball with the quarterback, I, I think his rushing stats will go up. I, I think that's something that you saw Lamar do. And I'm not saying Justin is anywhere close to the running sure. quarterback le that Lamar is, but Justin Herbert can do it. And he has de he did it at a very high level in the NFL and in college. So I think you might see some more rushing touchdowns from Justin Herbert as well. I, I don't think as much passing yards, but more efficient and more importantly, more wins. And I think Justin Herbert will trade more wins for more stats any day of the week. Absolutely. And we've always talked about, you know, we talked about another show, you know, having him win an MVP. You don't do that unless you have a great team. Gotta so win. Trying to build the team around him. And let's be honest, like Justin Herbert's easily the best thrower, right? Probably potentially best quarterback that he's had, at least as far as a passer goes, right? No oh, yeah. disrespect to Lamar Jackson, no. just totally different type of players. But like, yeah. We haven't seen what he looks like when he's trying to feature someone like Justin Herbert. When you're featuring Lamar Jackson, his legs are going to be a huge part of that, right? So maybe to. that influences yeah. it. When you have Alex Smith and Colin Kaepernick, maybe guys that aren't game-changing guys, maybe the offense looks a lot different, right? So you also have to trust that Jim Harbaugh has a vision for this offense and that Greg Roman is going to come in knowing that the best player on his team is Justin Herbert and trying to tailor an offense that works best for him, right? And you have to hope that Greg Roman has been able to evolve from the failures that he's had in the past. And I think that's all part of it. But you have to know, hey, 
you know, Marcus Brady also brought in the building to help with the passing game specifically. Yeah. So can that help him come into the 21st century of NFL offenses? So I think they're trying to supplement him and put pieces around him to help this be an offense that's not just a Greg Roman offense, right? But it's Greg Roman helping build an offense around who we know is one of the best quarterbacks in the game. And I think that's still giving you reason to hope, even though with the Chargers, you know, you don't always have that reason to hope. And that's what brings me to tell you guys that today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need an opportunity to get something off our chest, big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you, and it's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased in your life. So today I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking about the same thing this week. Can we talk about 27 to 0? Can we talk about it now? It's the new regime, because the one thing is, David, is the Chargers scarred me with that, and it's so hard because how could you ever feel good with a lead again after your team has you feeling all of the endorphins of winning a playoff game and then snatches it away from you that brutally? They don't lose that game with a Greg Roman offense or a Jim Harbaugh team, I'll tell you right now. So the wounds are already starting to heal. But before I had Jim Harbaugh and before I had all these new guys, I had therapy, which helped me get through a lot of that. And therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports teams. And it's important to get something off your chest every once in a while. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. And that's going to do it for today's show, guys. You know, not the first choice for us, but we understand the vision. And that's the main thing here. And we still feel plenty excited about what this new regime is going to do. So make sure you guys are always around by following us wherever you get your podcast from and on YouTube and subscribing there as well. And make sure you're following the social media, me at Dan Talk Sports, Dave Drogmeyer, Drow Talk SD in the show's page at Lockdown LAC. But as you know, we'll have full length episodes for you every day. It's the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. So we'll be back with you guys tomorrow. Make sure you're out looking for not only our Daniel Popper interview, which is coming out soon, but also our interview on new general manager, Joe Hortiz in his first official press conference because we have a lot of great stuff in there. But until then, guys, take it easy and go Bolts.